Definitely got some birds working here on something. As you can see, I was I'm able to get out eight. into the bay recently and test out the voltmeter, amp meter that I put in the battery box. I just couldn't wait any longer to try it out and see what kind of amperage this uh, water snake was drawing. Water temps were probably 39, air temps were probably like 42, so yeah, it was really cold. Uh, and all I really did was this, but it was uh, it was not easy because it was really windy as you saw there. It was a very windy day and had a very strong current with the high tidal coefficient. So, I mean, this is really actually a good day to test this stuff out because I'm not going to see these kinds of conditions really. I won't really ever fish in something like this. So it's good to see these conservative values. The trolling motor I've side mounted is the Water Snake TS24, and it's a 24-pound uh, thrust trolling motor. So now it's marketed that it draws nine at low and 20 on high. But what I found was uh, that it was taking less, and in pretty rough conditions, it was taking less amperage. Fins up. I'm testing out whether or not it makes a difference if you keep the fins horizontal versus vertical. And to my surprise, I didn't see really much a difference in the no. speed. But if you keep the fins just like this, where they're vertical, uh, I, for whatever reason, it's actually drawing slightly less amp. So I probably will do that in the future. I guess I just want to mention too that you know, I have nothing in the kayak. It is pretty light. I have less than what I usually take out. Um, you know, I weigh about 160, and this is the Hopi Compass 2021. So overall, you know, it's a pretty light setup, I say, generally speaking. So that is probably helping a lot of these results as well. And I don't know if you can see in the reflection there, but I'm holding back the trolling motor. It's kind of a disaster. This thing was starting to spin. I, you know, I hadn't taken it out in so long, and some bolts were loose, I think. As you're seeing on low, here it is uh, roughly around 8. So I was really getting around 8, drawing 8 amps when it was on low, and it was against the current. And then if I would uh, start to help pedaling, it would go down a little bit. And if it was like really strong, headwind and current, then it would maybe draw a little more, but right around 8, 8.5 is what it was drawing on low. And on high, it was drawing roughly double, so 16, maybe a little higher, 16 and a half, 17 when there was a strong headwind and current, but, you know, roughly double, 16, 16 and a half. But that's still way less than 20. And it's also, you know, the worst, again, it's the worst case scenario where I'm going into the wind and into the current. And after looking at all these results, I guess my conclusion is somewhere along the lines that you're doubling amperage to get one mile an hour extra. And when you pedal, you get an additional one mile an hour extra. So if you're doing two and a half miles an hour on low, no pedaling. When you put bump it up to high, you get 3.5, but you're doubling your amperage. And then if you pedal on top of that, you should get to four and a half miles an hour. Now that's like with not a headwind. The headwind really does slow you down, and I was having a hard time getting 
Yeah, as you see here, hard time getting beyond three miles an hour in that headwind. But if I really want to have this thing on high and draw, say 15 amps, because you go down maybe a little bit from pedaling. Um, if I want to draw 15 amps for four hours, you know, I really need a 60 amp hour battery at the minimum. With the wind. And that, that again is the, really the question though, is it really worth the one mile an hour to have this trolling motor run on high and need an extra battery and all that? But I think the answer is yes, I think it's still worth it. So I went about 131 watt hours, which divided by 12 is, you know, roughly uh, 10, roughly 10 amp hours. So I pulled 10 amp hours out of uh, 35, 